a lot of physicists spend their time worrying about what is the most elementary particle possible. I mean, uh, we know about molecules, we know about atoms, and we also know about electrons, protons, and neutrons. Are all those elementary, are they, or can they be uh, broken down into smaller parts? That's the subject of this section. So first of all, I'd like to um, reveal to you that for every charged particle there is a corresponding antiparticle. Often misunderstood. Um, 1932, for example, the positron, so-called, uh, because it's a positively charged electron, it was discovered. Uh, it has the same mass as the electron, but it has a positive charge. And um, positrons never exist, at least for very long, with ordinary matter um, because collisions between the positron and electron uh, annihilate these particles. So the electron, the positron come together. One's positively charged, the other's negatively charged. They hit, they poof, disappear, and they um, do create some energy in that process. And the energy of that annihilation process comes out in the form of gamma rays. And you'll remember from our discussion of electromagnetic uh, radiation that we've got the radio, we've got the infrared, we've got a visible, we've got ultraviolet, we've got um, x-rays and gamma rays. Gamma rays being the most energetic of those, um, uh, of those forms of electromagnetic radiation. So these reactions with electrons and, and positrons, the annihilation reactions, produce a huge amount of energy. Photon, gamma photons are very, very, uh, very, very energetic and very dangerous for the human body. So let's define an antiparticle. So for a particular particle, such as an electron, its antiparticle has the same mass. That's uh, for an electron, it's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. It's not a negative mass here. It's a negative charge. And it has the same mass. It has the opposite charge, so it's positive charge instead of negative in the case of the electron. And it has a magnetic moment that's opposite to its spin. So that, that's getting into a little bit of the quantum mechanical uh, definition, but the magnetic moment normally is in the direction of the spin of the particle. In this case, it's opposite for that antiparticle. Uh, you say, well, so what? Why should I worry about positrons? Well, have you ever heard of a PET scan? Uh, the P in PET is positron. So positrons are used in this very, very important diagnostic technique. So you inject a radioactive isotope into the body, and those isotopes collect at specific sites in the body. And then they, uh, that radioactive isotope disintegrates into positrons, and then those positrons annihilate with the nearby electrons with the, you know, via the annihilation reaction that we just talked about, and that produces gamma ray photons that travel in opposite directions. So here's the two gamma ray photons going in opposite directions. And so you've got detectors uh, on the two sides of those, op those oppositely directed gamma ray photons. So you can tell where that reaction occurred, the uh, positron-electron annihilation reaction occurred and helps you to pinpoint the place where the um, um, radioactive isotope is concentrated. And so you put it all together to, to get a computer-generated image of the site where the isotope collects. So this is one image created by a, a PET scan. So let's talk about the 
three families of ele elementary particles. Three types of elementary particles, all very important. Bosons. mediate the three fundamental forces. What do I mean by mediate? For example, the photon is a boson. The photon mediates the electromagnetic interaction. The photon is what tells this charged, um, charged particle to exert a repulsive force on this other charged particle, or attracted, depending on if they're the like charges or unlike charges. It's the photon that communicates that information back between the two. Uh, the um, graviton is a boson, and that mediates, the graviton is what uh, mediates the gravitational interaction. So if you've got the Earth and the Sun, how does the Sun know that the Earth has moved? Or how does the Earth know if the Sun has moved? Both of them have a mutual attraction, but how do they know? They know because of gra um, gravitons that are exchanged between them that tell each other what's happening. Those gravitons travel at the speed of light, same as photons do. And so, actually, I was talking with a couple of students yesterday that if you suddenly moved, just blew up the sun and got, got rid of it all of a sudden somehow, moved it out of the universe, the Earth wouldn't know until that information had traveled using gravitons, uh, that distance between the Earth and the, and the, sun, and the sun. So um, there's a little bit of a delay. The Earth is now responding to the gravitational field created by the sun at the time, uh, at a few seconds ago, I think it's eight minutes, the time it takes light to travel between the sun and the Earth. So that's bosons. They mediate these fundamental forces. They, they facilitate the forces. That's, they're what make the forces act on, on other things. Leptons uh, are in, in, interact through the weak nuclear force. And it, um, we've talked about the weak nuclear force. It's the one responsible for beta decay. And uh, these leptons interact through this force. They can also interact through gravitational forces and electromagnetic forces. But as long as they interact through the weak nuclear force, um, they are leptons. One example of a lepton is an electron, just a plain old electron. And um, it is a particle that interacts with other particles through for sure the weak nuclear force, but also electromagnetic and sometimes gravitational forces. Hadrons interact through both the strong and the weak nuclear force. That's how we essentially define uh, one example of a hadron is a proton. So let's uh, look at these particles. We talked about bosons. We talked about photons that mediates the electromagnetic interaction, the electric force, the magnetic force. Um, these guys, are uh, bosons, the W and Z bosons, uh, mediate the weak interaction. Uh, gluon, uh, gravitons we talked about, mediates the gravitational interaction. That's how two massive gravitational bodies communicate with each other is via gravitons. And then gluons uh, are what mediate the strong interaction. So these, these guys here, mediate the weak nuclear, nuclear, so this is the electromagnetic, the photon, gluons mediate the strong nuclear um, reaction, and then gravitons mediate the gravitational interaction. Leptons, electrons, um, uh, muon, tau, electron neutrino, tau neutrino, as well as uh, they're antiparticles. So an electron is generally denoted as E minus in the, in the notation of particle physicists. The positron is denoted as E plus. Also, uh, the electron is denoted as beta minus. It's a beta 
part, beta ray, like we talked about in radioactivity, uh, beta plus is a um, positron. All these different particles have their, their antiparticles. Uh, a muon, these are created by cosmic rays coming into our atmosphere, and, um, and there's a decay process for them. Their rest energies um, can all be calculated, and we'll say a little bit more about that. Some are stable. Uh, electron is stable, but um, the muon, for example, another lepton, is not stable. It has a lifetime of 10 to the minus 6, about one millionth of a second. Then hadrons. Remember that bosons are the things that mediate all three fundamental forces. They're, they're responsible for doing the communication between two bodies. Leptons are it, interact via the weak nuclear interaction, the weak nuclear force, this one here. And then hadrons, the third category, interact via the weak and the strong. The uh, bosons and leptons are thought to be elementary, nothing smaller than them, that they're, they're as far as it goes if you're trying to cut things into its individual pieces as opposed to hadrons, which are not thought to be elementary, but are composed of um, fractionally charged elementary particles called quarks. Hadrons come in two flavors, and we're going to make a distinction between the two flavors of hadrons. They're called mesons, which, have, which are made up of two quarks each, a a, a particle and an antiparticle pair of quarks, and baryons, which have three. A great example of a baryon are the proton and the neutron. Then you have um, lots of other baryons. In fact, this is not a complete list. Um, in fact, the, the list of bosons I meant to mention earlier is not complete either. There's a so-called Higgs boson that a few years ago was finally observed experimentally in one of the most spectacular uh, observations of the Large Hadron Collider observed the Higgs particle, sometimes called the God particle, um, that, and it's not, there's a lot of misinformation about the Higgs boson. The Higgs actually is related to these two um, and is responsible for giving these two guys, uh, these two particles, bosons, their mass. That's why these guys have mass, and it's the Higgs that is responsible for um, for creating that mass of these other bosons. It's been observed. So uh, we talked about two types of hadrons, mesons and baryons, and um, some that are familiar, uh, others that are not. And the fact that these hadrons are not elementary, but are composed of quarks. So here's uh, these quarks. Uh, account for the charges and other properties of hundreds of hadrons. It's been a very, very successful theory. Those uh, masses that we talked about here, um, hadron masses down this column right there, um, the quark theory has accounted for those masses in a very elegant way. There are six quarks. I'm not asking you to memorize all these, but just to give you an idea, they're fractionally charged. Some have two-thirds of the electronic charge. So when I told you before that the smallest uh, amount of electronic charge is, is E, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, I lied. Because here, we get two-thirds of E, two-thirds of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. 
And here we have a minus one-third. Minus one-third here, plus two-thirds. So it's, you're talking either about minus one-third or plus two-thirds uh, of the basic charge. There's the up, the down, the strange, the charmed, the top, and the bottom quark. How do we come up with these names? I don't know exactly. But quarks are strange, but have a lot of charm. So we said already that mesons have two quarks. And in fact, they're made up of a quark-antiquark pair. So this is the pi minus meson, and it consists of a down quark and an anti-up quark, the antiparticle of the up quark. So let me just uh, remind ourselves what the up quark was. The up had a charge of plus two thirds. And um, it's anti, the anti-up has the negative of the charge of the up. So it's a negative two thirds E. So here, there's the anti-up, here's the down, and the total amount of charge you've got here is minus one-third E minus two-thirds E, which is minus E. So this, this uh, pi meson has a charge of minus E. Uh, pi plus meson is just the, just the opposite. It has a down, an anti-down and an up quark. But again, it's a meson, so it has only two quarks, a quark and an anti-quark pair. Baryons. What about the proton? Well, it consists of two ups and a down quark. So we got two thirds plus two thirds is four thirds, minus one third is one. So its total charge is plus E. And you say, I knew that. I knew the charge on the proton is plus E, plus uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Neutron is two downs and an up. So you have minus one third, minus one third is a minus two thirds, plus two thirds gives us zero. So there's no charge on the, on the neutron. <coughs> so baryons all have three quarks. So that's the essential uh, physics there. One of the concepts, uh, I think it was last chapter, <coughs> was uh, to compare the size of the electron orbits in an atom, which are about 10 to the minus 10 meters, to the size of a nucleus or a neutron. Nucleus for a very small, um, small atom, 10 to the minus 15, about 100,000 times smaller. How big are quarks? Less than about 10 to the minus 18 meters is the, the extent of their influence. Molecules, uh, about 10 to the 9 meters, a nanometer for a regular molecule. 